Sup, y'all? This is Vocab Malone. How y'all doing? We're gonna get into my new book again. Barack Obama versus the black Hebrew Israelites. What we've been doing is going through the book chapter by chapter, making these little video summaries. If you are glad you have it, or you're thinking you want it, or you don't want it, but you might want to know what's in there, or you want to have some behind the scenes information from the author, here you go. Chapter five is called Relevant Biblical Passages. All right. Raka of GOCC and James White debate that happened last year and it shows the Hebrew Israelite tendency impulse to tell somebody who's not from their perspective or they perceive as not being in their same ethnic lineage that they don't have the right to even explain or study the scriptures in any kind of meaningful way with them like a fallback so let me show you an example of it this is what you need to do okay go you have your strong concordance in sir sir I don't use strong concordance I teach Hebrew uh, listen, sir, sir, listen. Okay, well, I'm going to read this for those who can hear it. Okay? Bailey. Hebrew 1180 in the Strongs. Okay? From 1167 with phenomenal suffix, my master Bailey, a symbolical name of Jehovah, Bailey. Symbolical so, uh, name where? See, I'm, I'm sorry, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance is not an inspired source. It's very dated, and I, I'm sorry, but anyone who's dependent upon that is going to stumble many, many times. Well, well it's just, I, I just highly recommend to you Listen. actually learning the language. It would help a lot. Well, you know what, what would really help? Would. It would help if you give, you, you would yield and actually give the floor back and give the our scriptures back to, to, to you know, because these I'm are, sorry, these they're not your scriptures, <laughs> sir. They, they listen, were given to the these, Christian church James, as a James, whole. James, listen. These scriptures were given through inspiration of our prophets. The, these are our forefathers, my forefathers. Here. That's your assertion. So, that's my assertion, and guess what? It's... You have no authority to tell me what's in this book. That took place uh, June 2016 on the dividing line. But sometimes people use that as a shortcut to a hamstring dialogue that could happen. There's a way to kind of just be like, well, you don't have the authority in the first place, so what? Well, the Hebrew Israelites, especially the one Wester, they use this sometimes in the beginning of the conversation, sometimes at the end, or sometimes in the middle. It depends on what point they feel frustrated and really how much patience they have, honestly. They say, well, you don't have any authority anyway. Or if you're not a Hebrew Israelite, but you might be part of that same ethnic group, they're like, well, you're blind anyway. Or say you're a female. There's different ways they have to go about it. Nonetheless, this is the section out of all the sections that's most written or geared towards the Hebrew Israelites. It's called relevant biblical passages. Some people may be frustrated with this chapter because there's so much scripture printed out. But I did that because I knew I couldn't just reference verses. If I want Hebrews lights to look at this chapter specifically, or Christians say to go over some of the work in here, go over it with Hebrews lights or whatever, I knew that I had to have the stuff printed out. Before I do that, I talk about places where Christians and Hebrews lights have dialogued and debated these issues. See there, it says the top 20 debates on debate talk for you refuting Hebrew Israelism, pages 81 and 82. And then I list a number of debates and discussions where the Bible has been debated in some way between two proponents of these positions. And I think these are helpful for people to listen to. So then I give some comments on Obadiah 1, uh, 15 through 18, that's an important passage to them. And then uh, also Obadiah 1, 9 through 10. I go into some basic points that are kind of adding commentary to that about the idea of like who is included in the people of God. And I show even how from the Old Covenant the God's people are and have been made up of a mixed multitude. And I do that mainly from the Old Covenant scriptures. I show how strangers had to keep the covenant law, including circumcision and Passover. So the idea is that the New Covenant certainly is a broadening out of the horizon, but it's not 100% unprecedented in every way, especially when you consider the Abrahamic promise. And I'm trying to show that with these scriptures. And I give examples of each point. Israel was commanded to love the stranger. Uh, Non-Israelites could be part of God's people. There are multiple examples of non-Israelites being part of Israel and worshiping the God of Israel. I give some of those examples. It's kind of switched there to dealing with that issue to going back to dealing with some exegetical issues with Hebrew Israelites in relationship to that. And then I talk about kind of the definition of the gospel that you get from Hebrew Israelites and maybe what the biblical answer is instead. Then I talk about how to explain or passages to use to show the gospel to Hebrew Israelites. And I give some couple, uh, some principles to help you do that. Uh, one is the gospel is of supreme importance. 
Another one is salvation is not of the law because no one keeps the law. Or you could rephrase that as all sin and this requires judgment. The next one, principle three, the old covenant points to Christ and the new covenant. Next one is Christ fulfilled the law perfectly and Christ completely paid the penalty for our sin. Principle five is Christ ushered in the new covenant. Principle six is our response is to repent and trust the work of Christ. Here's one thing, it's just the gospel basics, but it's a little call out section. Therefore, we are justified before God by grace alone on account of the work of Christ alone. And this free justification is through faith alone. Page 99, the gospel for the Hebrew Israelites. I'm reading from the book. If you have a basic Sunday school level of understanding the gospel, you may even be able to break down the manifold problems in the soteriology. If not, let me share one more shocking statement from the book, uh, from the same book, rather. So what book am I referring to? Well, let me tell you real quick. So there's a Hebrew Israelite group uh, in Canada, and they're under the leadership of Elder Shadrach Porter. They're not one Westers. They're more similar to GOCC. Uh, in that they accept other so-called nations, but I want you to see what he writes about salvation, and he uses the song Amazing Grace as a way to do it. The author, the author writes that, quote, the song Amazing Grace is strictly for Gentiles, and no Israelite should ever utter it. Since the law was given to Israel, then they're supposed to keep it to sort of part of the salvation project for them. But if you're part of another nation, then it's through grace, because it's not through the law, through an Israelite, through Jesus. So that's why only non-Israelites could say Amazing Grace if they can be grafted in. The small version of one Westers or Hebrew Israelites who hold that Gentiles can be grafted in, that's a common way they think about it. Here, so let me read this other part right here. This says the gospel according to Hebrew Israelism. Now specifically, again, I want to point out, I don't believe this Canadian-based group is a one West group, but GOCC is. The small amount of groups who um, hold that Gentiles can be grafted in, so-called Gentiles. Let me start here from 97. Very few Hebrew Israelite works focus on the gospel or discuss their understanding of biblical salvation in depth. In layman's terms, the soteriology of Hebrew Israelism is an absolute mess. The closest parallels are the Judaizers, so that's from the, from the Bible, of Galatians 2.14. Hebrew Israelites are akin to modern day Harlem Judaizers or Chicago Judaizers or Demona Judaizers. I'm just saying what part they're from, you know, those aren't all one Western, so. One Westers only Judaize those they perceive to be fellow Israelites, as one Westers do not believe the so-called other nations have any chance of salvation. The exception is GOCC. They Judaize everybody. Elder Shadrach Porter's Canadian-based Israelite group are not one Westers, so their soteriology would match closer with GOCC, who is a one West offshoot who began accepting so-called other nations. I know it can kind of get confusing. Still, I have found their writings on salvation to be illuminating. First, they actually have written on the subject in a relatively clear manner. This alone makes them stand out. Second, their words give full illustration to the Judaizing tendencies of all Hebrew Israelite groups. So here's the quote. Grace is that source that can save the world, but it is only given by an Israelite because he is the rich man. He gets his riches by keeping the law. So they're, they're talking about a parable there of the rich man. So they're saying Israelites are the rich man, but how does he get rich? He gets rich by keeping the laws, the statutes and the commandments. The heathen and the Gentile would get their riches through him. In other words, the Israelites are always under the law. The law is their source. The Gentile would be under grace because they are not of the circumcision and they were not chosen by God. End quote. So to me, that's incredibly illuminating, helpful to understand in relationship to groups like GOCC. Now, again, this is the Canadian group, but I think that's the basic way they think. Or the Israel of God, who also are not a One West group, but that's the same types of soteriology that they behold to. Uh, the same author Shadrach says on the next page, quote, We will prove that no one except an Israelite can gain salvation direct from God. You hear that? So Israelites can gain salvation direct from God, but how do they do it? From the law, uh, the rich man gets his riches by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But then other folks, other nations, if they're able to be grafted in, even though they weren't chosen by God, they go through an Israelite because of his law keeping. In Catholicism, how's the treasury of merit? It's almost like they've got Israelites who, who have a treasury of merit that they can distribute to non-Israelites so they can get in. But again, remember, this is a limited section of these guys. Um, and some of the groups I talk about in here aren't one Westers. They help explain it though. And so here's his breakdown of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 3 through 9. After that I'm going to pretty much be done. This is his breakdown of Ephesians 2 3 through 9, okay? Please do not generalize statements written in the Bible. 
they are strictly for and about Israelites. In the third verse, Paul is reminding the Gentiles who they really were, the children of wrath. So that's just Gentiles there. In verses 7 and 8, we notice the clearness and clarity of the underlying statement that the Gentiles cannot be saved by themselves, but by the grace of the Christ who was an Israelite and through faith. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9, classic Protestant proof text for justification by grace through faith alone. In contrast to Roman Catholic doctrine, they're saying that's only applying to Gentiles. It's not applying to Israelites. See what I'm saying? This particular group, so this is the one West and non-one West groups who believe Gentiles can be grafted in. The only way a Gentile and an Israelite can join together in Christ is through the doctrine of Israel, not Christianity. End quote. So even though it's confusing, it's also helpful when you look at it. The book there I'm quoting from frequently in this chapter is The Word, The Israelites, and The Damned, uh, 1993, uh, from Fifth Rib Publishing. And uh, the main sections are 99 uh, through pages 102. I want people to understand the variety better of Hebrew Israelism and their theology better and hopefully this book does that they get kind of antsy man it's like even when uh, you know get a camera it's like it's feel antsy you know but i gotta sit still and i gotta do this thing you guys are awesome and you guys like my hat today so you guys know what that is program for etiquette and protocol that's c3po man that's c3po So I'm gonna end the video like this. <laughs> Alright, y'all, for real peace. You guys have a good one.